Okay, the next step in the process is going to be building the heated bed. Okay, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is find these three pieces and then I'm going to insert these heat inserts into the top. And just like in the past heat inserts that we've done, uh, there's a little lip that fits into the part. Make sure that you're, you don't put it on this side. It needs to go on the side that's flat. All right, and once those are done, you just take your, your heat insert soldering iron and you're gonna make them flush to the part. And here is the bed. Uh, as you can see, mine came with this nice um, cover on it. Um, you can also see that there's these are countersunk here, so the screw can go in, and then and then the bottom <clears throat> is going to be like this, where it's just a regular M3 hole. And then there's also some holes on the bottom that are going to be used for the fuse if you want to put one on there. For this next part, you're going to need the magnet that goes on the bed, as well as uh, something to kind of push it down and smooth it. I use this Pampered Chef, um, it's like a scraper, but it works pretty well for this kind of stuff. And then uh, you're also gonna need some, probably some IPA is a good idea to uh, clean off your bed. The other thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna mark these um, this magnet so I, I knew where to punch it because there aren't holes in it, not a big deal. They're easy to punch, just use a hole punch. At least that's what I'm gonna do. That way you'll have access to the screws through the magnet. This is my industrial strength uh, leather tool punch and it, it'll work just fine, or should. Okay, as you can see, I got a pretty clean cut. Um, everything mostly lines up, so now I just have to put the magnet on the bed and then... Um... All right, I've gone ahead and wiped down the IPA and now I'm going to put the magnetic sheet on. And I'm going to start from the top edge because I made it, I made everything flush or intended everything to, to go flush against this, these two sides here when I cut it. So I'm just going to peel a little bit back and this stuff's pretty sticky. So I'm going to start about that much. I'm going to try to line it up very carefully to the hole and to the edge because that's, again, that's how I kind of laid it out so then I'll go ahead and push and you can certainly use this kind of tool if you're if you want to get a really good seal on it and then from there you just do a little bit more at a time and again you want to make sure nothing's on your bed and then it's cleaned off and you don't want any kind of bubbles or anything but you're probably not going to get them on this this is pretty thick like my holes weren't perfectly aligned but that's pretty easy easy to fix with a, a little bit of a um, like one of these which I'll probably have to do and then the last thing I'm going to do is trim it just use a little cutting tool trim the excess magnet off There we go, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna clean up these holes a little bit and then it should be good to go. And then you can test your plate. Oops, so you can see it sticks pretty good. No issues there. And then we're gonna be putting a PEI sheet on this plate at some point. All right, for the next step, it's very similar. Uh, you're gonna flip over the bed. You're gonna wipe it down with IPA to get it good and clean. And then you're gonna to need to find your silicon heater or in, well, in my case it's silicon heater, yours might be different. This is actually an AC bed. So this is from the original V0 bomb, but I, I prefer AC beds. I think they're, they're pretty nice. They heat up quick. It's 110 volts, um, so 100 watt bed. All right, with this, you wanna make sure that you mount it correctly. So the back of the wires need to come out behind the, the two sides where uh, the back of the bed basically. So this is the front of the bed. So I'm gonna basically put it on just like that. I think uh, you probably wanna center it as best as you can since it doesn't cover the whole bed, but it'll get plenty hot enough because uh, with the heat transfer of the aluminum. 
I went ahead and marked my bed just so I, I can easily see it when I put it on. I'm going to do it the same procedure where I'm basically going to peel off a little bit at a time. This 3M tape is pretty sticky. And pretty much once these things go on, they don't come off without easily, well, without, yeah, they don't come off easily in there. You can destroy your heater trying to pull them off if you're not careful. So I'm going to go a little bit ahead of that line. Make sure I get a good stick on that. And then I'm just going to pull the rest of the backing off. Kind of work my way down just like I did on the magnet. A little bit at a time. Make sure it stays nice and straight. And there is room in here if you want to put a, a fuse on here. Okay, for the next steps, you're going to need these M3 lock nuts, some M340s, these doohickeys, and your bed springs. We're just going to basically be assembling those onto the bed. All right, before you insert those button head screws in, I ended up cleaning out the holes around where I punched them just because uh, I was having a hard time getting them in. So now there's plenty of room to get them in, and it doesn't look bad. Insert these M340s in all the holes. And then, after that, you're going to have to put the lock nuts. You're going to have to take them here and go all the way to the bottom of the screw. The technique that I'm planning to use here would, will be to hold it with needle nose pliers and then take your M3 driver and basically just torque it until it's all the way um, through. So, a little bit tiresome, but it gets the job done. All right, I got the first one done, and that's how it should look. As you can see, I have all three screws on now. I will say that these Viha or Viha tools made in Germany make it really easy on this part because you can just kind of rotate it with your hand, and it's got this built in. So made it uh, a little bit easier than it probably would have been with a straight Allen wrench or other kind of driver. Okay, next up, I'm going to take these yellow springs. I'm going to be mounting these under the screws. Um, and setting them in the bed so they should set in pretty easily there's little pockets for them I don't think it matters which way they go so and now you just gotta basically fit this over try to keep your wiring out of the way and it actually went in pretty easily yeah not bad okay so that went in and now you're gonna use the little thumb screw de deals these guys here, uh, they're gonna go underneath. They're gonna go in just like this. Uh, this piece right here that kind of comes up is, goes towards the bed and the flat piece is away from the bed. To do these pieces, I uh, like this on its back and then um, made it a little easier to access. I raised the bed up a little bit too. All right, so both sides are pretty good. Probably just snug them up to the plastic. There we go. Okay, now I'm doing, running the wires from the heated bed. And basically what I'm going to do here is <clears throat> there's some zip some hidden spots in this piece for, for zip ties that will give you some strain relief and help keep it tidy. And then you also need to run the wires through the cable chain and insert that on. So here we go. To help route my wires through, I'm going to use a small piece of uh, black electrical tape. That way they're not, you know, they're not going everywhere and I can hopefully push it through the cable chain easier. But I do find that the tape does help. Um, you may want to snip your <coughs> wires a little bit too. And you're definitely going to have to trim, trim down your, um, uh, or not trim, but you're going to have to reduce the size of your cable as well. At least my, mine's really long, so I'm, there's no way I'm going to need all this. Okay, so I have basically taped off where I think I need to disconnect the link, which is right about here. Um, after kind of running the bed up to about as high as I think it needs to go and just checking, you know, what the chain looks like. So I think that's where I'm going to remove it and put in the other end of it, which is right here. 
Okay, before I completely run the cable chain, I wanted to pull all the wires through, and then I want to go ahead and firm up or zip tie up these uh, wires. So I inserted zip ties through here and here. They're just four inch zip ties, and I'm kind of getting these nice and snug, fitting in the channel, and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten them up. Put this piece in here. There's a lock nut there, or a nut that I can screw this into with one screw and then I'm gonna connect it and run it through the bottom. All right, now I'm at the point where I'm putting the cable chain connector on. Um, this is a tough screw, so you really do need to use a ball joint driver to be able to twist it, otherwise you're gonna have problems. Luckily, I've got a pretty nice one. So I'm just getting that tightened up, and that should be it for that piece. Now I just gotta connect the cable chain. Okay, now I'm just routing these wires before I connect the cable chain. Okay, I've got the cable chain in now and the bed all the way to the top. You can kind of see there where how the cable chain looks in the back here. Um, I ended up actually removing the links and I've got 11 total links because it was just a little bit, it's kind of bulging a little bit too much to the right. So with this, everything operates smoothly. You can kind of see how the cable chain works as you raise and lower the bed. So it just kind of stays put, which is what you want.